Lord be with you. It's uh, really good to be with you today on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost and just want to uh, share some uh, deep words of appreciation from the McCarty family for the outpouring of love and, and support from the congregation and deep appreciation for all who were able to uh, come to the memorial service for, for Maggie May on on Friday, over 300 of you were here, and, and certainly there were those who were unable uh, to be here because of work or travel, uh, but they are certainly grateful to all of you, even if you weren't able to be here, just for your prayers and, and for your support. Uh, the, the meal train is filling up quickly. There are a few spots uh, left. It goes from now until November 5th, if you're able uh, to sign up. There are really just people from all over the community, not only our Bethlehem church, but uh, other churches as well. So uh, how wonderful is that? And of course, uh, they're also being taken of, care of financially right now, and that'll be ongoing for a while. Um, I know a lot of people are asking what they can do, but we're in this for the long haul. And so there will uh, be other opportunities as things develop. They have a lot of family. The McCartys have a lot of family with them right now. Um, many of those family members will be leaving this week. And, uh, but the church family is, is going to continue to, uh, to be here and to support them. I wanted to let you know, too, that the gentleman, um, Bob Van Ness, who uh, collapsed at the end of the uh, inurnment service at the columbarium, He's home, he's fine. In fact, he was home by about six o'clock on Friday. Uh, vitals are good and everything is, is good. So that is really, really great news uh, to hear about Bob. Uh, confirmation this uh, Wednesday, Vicar is teaching the uh, seventh grade class. We had a fantastic uh, confirmation orientation this past Wednesday. And uh, there were a couple of families that came in, uh, new families. Uh, whose uh, children have never been baptized. So uh, I'm going to be taking them through some instruction on, on baptism. So great news that we've got some baptisms coming up as well. Vicar, do you have anything that you'd like to add to that? Uh, after confirmation at 6.30 will be youth group again this week. And my Bible study is Thursday mornings at 9.30. And then lastly, uh, board game night this Friday at 5.30. I've been talking about it the last few weeks. It's uh, finally come up. So if you're free and want to come down, we'd love to have you. Very good. Thank you, Vicar. Uh, and just one more thing that I wanted to mention. We had a couple of uh, grief counselors here on, on Friday. Uh, they left their information. They're with the Florida Georgia District of the LCMS. Uh, they left some of these pamphlets that are in the narthex if you'd like to take one. And their services are available, even though they're in Orlando. Uh, they do a lot um, of Zoom, a lot of uh, uh, Facebook or fa uh, what is it, Facebook Live uh, conferences and things like that. So they are also available. If you want more information, you can uh, pick up a pamphlet uh, in the narthex at the end of the service. And Darlene, she has something uh, really special to talk to us about, about our upcoming, uh, we're thinking about Christmas already and our gifts to uh, the children in our community and around the world. So Darlene. So this is Samaritan's Purse, and it's the Operation Christmas Child. And we've, Holly is um, out of town but asked me to share this with you. This is going to be one of our projects this Christmas, and it is early, like Pastor mentioned, because we send this all over the world through Samaritan's Purse. So they, you will pick up a box in the back and fill it with some things, and you get to pick the age boy or girl and you can do the little ones the or the five to nines or the ten to fourteens and then there's a late I have these papers back there because we ran out earlier so um, it, every box you get you need one sheet of those but anyway they suggest like one wow item a baby doll or a stuffed toy and maybe a ball with a pump so like a soccer ball or some type of football or something they could play with and um, you know one wow item and then you can just fill it I've just came up with some random smaller things this is a little prayer um, it's I try to put some religious things in there and 
this is um, a little storybook from the Lord's Prayer. But you can see you can fit a lot in there. I've got a little ball and little beads to make a little bracelet, um, things to color or paint. And um, the, the brochure is going to tell you what you can and can't, or you can look it up online, include in here. So, so no, li no liquids, but... Uh, no liquids, um, no... Colored... Uh, you can't do paint, but okay. you can do um, Water. that watercolor paint that's okay. a little hard color, you know. And so this is what you'll do, and we're going to collect them in November. November 12th is the last Sunday we can take them in. You can just leave them in the back as you prepare them, and we'll have a big send off and hopefully it looks to me like a lot of boxes so that's going to be awesome good thank that's you. fantastic thank, thank you. you so much darlene so we're here to uh to worship so if you would please stand face the processional cross for our opening hymn our beginning today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now kneel as we're able to do so for confession and absolution. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. O oh, most gracious God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We know well that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Daily we have done things we ought not to have done, and have not done that which are, are to have been doing as your faithful servants. We have been unforgiving and loveless and careless in the stewardship of your creation. We deserve your presence in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is not in ourselves, but in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant us remission of all our sins, and guide us into renewed lives that reflect your goodness and love. 
God is indeed gracious and merciful and hears our supplications. As a servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now stand to sing words of thanksgiving for these words of forgiveness that we've heard. ready to hear the prayers of your people. Grant that we may with all boldness and courage bring to you our petitions with the assurance that for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will hear them, forgiving our trespasses and granting us your guidance in this life and every blessing in the life to come. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. Here's an account of the continuation of the narrative of Joseph and his brothers. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Here the Apostle Paul reminds us that we belong to the Lord. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in, it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord. Since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, 
we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. So why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For as it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused, and went de- he refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of our Lord. We now confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
reflect your mercy toward others. Make us confident that you will take our mistakes and turn them into blessings. This we ask in the name of and for the sake of him who taught us how to forgive, even Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our text for today uh, is based on the uh, parable that Vicar read just a few minutes ago, the parable of the unforgiving servant. And I'd like to read uh, verse 33 of Matthew 18 again. Remember, these are Jesus' words. Jesus is telling this parable. And he says these words in the parable. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? This is our text. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Unforgiveness is a cancer of the soul. Unforgiveness is a spiritual prison holding in solitary confinement the one who refuses to let go. The one who refuses to forgive. Sin is inevitable. We are all sinners. There is none righteous, not one. And when two or three sinners dance, toes will be stepped on. Sometimes it's from what someone says. Sometimes it's the result of what someone does. And sometimes it might even just be the result of someone looking at you the wrong way. And sometimes that's done intentionally. And sometimes it is done unintentionally. We kneel in this church for our confession every Sunday as we are able to. And often in our confession, we include those words, forgive us, Lord, of our sins of thought, of word, and of deed. Forgive us, Lord, of the things of our mind, the thoughts in our heads. Sometimes it's by the words that we have spoken, sometimes by the words that we haven't spoken, sometimes by our deeds, things that we have done or things that we have left undone, what we call sins of commission, the sins that we commit, but also equally important are sins of omission, the very things that God tells us to do, but we omit from doing, including forgiving those who have sinned against us. No, forgiveness is not easy, and yet forgiving can also take an even greater toll on us than forgiving someone ever could. I like watching movies. Uh, One of the problems that I have, though, in watching film is uh, I like to find a sermon in every movie that I see. (laughs) Sometimes Diane will put the control on pause and said, okay, do you want to tell the story? Do you want to preach the sermon, or are we going to watch the movie first? (laughs) And I preach the sermon afterwards. But I like watching movies, and one of these films that I I saw years years ago, I think it was about maybe the uh, early 2000s, maybe around 2005, Uh, Joan Allen is in it, and she plays the role of Terry. Uh, Kevin Costner is in it, he plays the role of Denny, a neighbor of, of Terry. And as the story unfolds, you see how... 
Terry becomes embittered because she believes that her husband has run away with the office secretary, that they moved to Sweden together because one day her husband just didn't come home and she was convinced that her husband had betrayed her and had moved to Sweden with his secretary. And she just, she just starts to collapse, just goes downhill. The movie, by the way, is called The Upside of Anger. And she is so bitter, she begins to drink, she turns into an alcoholic, she has four daughters. The whole family becomes toxic, and then finally Terry finds some joy when she hears her daughters say, we hate him too, Mom. And in her bitterness, this bitterness that has take su taken such deep root in her heart and in her, her soul, it infects the relationships that she has with everyone, and they are all destroyed because of her bitterness and her, her, her anger. And then she develops a, a friendship with her, her neighbor, and his name is Denny. And finally, that relationship is is destroyed as well because now she's taking out her bitterness and her anger and her inability to forgive. She's taking it out on her neighbor, Denny, as well. And one day, uh, Denny is looking in the back of, uh, of Terry's property where a new development is coming in. So Ter Denny is checking out the acreage to see where they're going to put this new development. And he sees some com commotion at the back uh, part of the acreage, he sees surveyors and he sees workers there and he walks up to them and he says, what's going on? And they have discovered a well, a really deep well. And in that well, they discover the body of Terry's former husband who had fallen into this well when he too was out looking at the property having heard about this development. And he went while he was walking the dog and fell into the well. And so the infidelity never happened, except in Terry's mind. But because she imagined that it did happen, Terry lived with these immense feelings of betrayal, anger, bitterness, and the inability to forgive and to move on. And so she adopts this lifestyle of, of alcoholism and, and bitter rage and destroys the relationships with everybody that she knows. It's really just this sad, sad story. And, and even if her husband had betrayed her and abandoned her, surely forgiveness would have been a healthier response for everyone concerned than a lifetime of anger and resentment. Because anger and resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness can ultimately take a, 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 a terrible toll on our, our own hearts and, and souls. Forgiveness is not easy. And so as I stand before you today and I talk about the importance of forgiveness, please believe me that I am not saying that all you have to do is get a, a, a smiley face and walk around and say, don't worry, be happy. That everything that happened is just okay. It's just wonderful. Don't worry, you're forgiven. No, forgiveness is not easy. It killed our Lord. He died in order to forgive you and, and me. And not forgiving can take a greater toll on us than forgiving ever could. Forgiveness and forgiving of someone ultimately is to set that person free, but it is also to be set free ourselves. And as I look around the congregation today and I see those of you who are sitting in the pews, I just can't help but wonder if there's someone in this room today that needs to be set free. Forgiveness is not easy. Just ask God. Forgiveness is what the cross is all about. 
On Golgotha, God forgave the sins of the world through the suffering of his son. And the forgiveness that you and I grant to others is built upon what Christ has done for us. And that's what this parable before us is all about. After Jesus tells Peter to forgive his brother 70 times 7, he tells Peter this fascinating parable about a king who decides to settle his accounts with his servants. And he calls the first servant in who owes this, this exorbitant amount of money, 10,000 talents, that's bags and bags of gold. In fact, it's an amount that can never be paid back. And the king calls this, this servant in who owes this incredible amount. And he says, I'm going to throw you in jail, and I'm going to sell your wife, and I'm going to sell your children, and I'm going to sell your land, and I'm going to put you in jail until you are able to pay back everything that you owe me, which could never happen. Because the amount is, is so large. And the servant falls on his knees, and he begs the king, have mercy on me. And incredibly, the king has pity on him, shows mercy on him, forgives him, and lets him go. The man himself doesn't even have to do anything to repay the debt. The king has forgiven the debt. This immeasurable amount, the king forgives him. And then when the servant is released, he goes and he finds one of his underlings who owes a pittance. It, it says a hundred denarii. King James says 100 pieces of silver. It's a minute amount compared to the bags of gold that, that the servant owed. It's a small amount, maybe $100. And the servant grabs this, uh, his underling and he grabs him and he begins to choke him and he says, you're going to pay me everything that you owe or I'm going to throw you in prison for the rest of your life until it's paid back and the underling falls on his knees and he says, please have mercy on me. And the servant refuses to forgive him and throws him in jail. It's unimaginable, and it was unimaginable to the other servants who observed this and who heard about it, and they all went in mass to the king and they said, we can't believe it. This one to whom you forgave this immeasurable amount that could never be paid back, you forgave him and yet he refuses to forgive his servant, who owes him only a little bit. And so the king calls in this unforgiving servant, and he says these words to him, You wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? king hands him over to the jailers until he can pay back everything that is owed, which is impossible because the amount is so much. And then having told this parable, Jesus says, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. the end of the 8 o'clock service today, there was a gentleman that talked to me about this. He's in his 80s. He said, I needed to hear that, Pastor. He said, in fact, recently when I've been praying the Lord's Prayer and pray those words, forgive us our trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me, he said, just recently, he said, I've been thinking about that because I'm so often coming and asking God's forgiveness for me, but I realize how difficult it has been in the course of my life to forgive others, and I've been praying that God would help me to do that. And that's why Jesus tells this parable, because he wants his disciples to be able to forgive others and, and, and teach this understanding of, of, of grace and of God's love and forgiveness for us, and now our call by God to forgive others. Because our forgiveness of others can only be done by, by the God of grace and through the God of grace. Louis Smedes is this wonderful uh, Christian ethicist who, who wrote in a book that I read several years ago. He said that forgiveness is outrageous. 
because it goes against a strict morality that will not settle for anything less than an even score. That's the world. Then he says, but forgiveness is creative because out of it comes a new beginning out of a past pain that never had a right to exist in the first place. And I love that because it tells us, it doesn't excuse the an event that may have happened in our lives. It doesn't excuse something that that someone did to us. There's no excuse at all for that. And it certainly doesn't mean that we just have to walk back into that which was toxic or abusive or destructive. It doesn't mean that at all. But it does mean that somewhere in our life, by God's grace and looking at Christ's love and sacrifice for us, for me personally, praying that God would move me to forgive others. Because I don't, if I don't do it as Christ has done it for me, I find myself entrapped in this world of hatred and of bitterness. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and then discover that the prisoner is you. And Jesus wants us to be set free from that prison. There are some biblical characters that tell this, so, this, uh, this story. Judas, everybody knows the story of Judas. Betrayed his Lord. Judas knew who Jesus was. Jesus said that he had come as the, the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. He knew what the mission of Jesus was. And yet he could not accept that forgiveness from Jesus and he could not forgive himself. And we know what happened to Judas. And you had Peter's sin too, which was every bit as, as, as vile. He denied his Savior not once, not twice, but three different times. It was so bad in fact that, 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 that Peter, after he says, I don't know the man. I've never heard of the guy. I've never had anything to do with him. Finally, this just overwhelms Peter's conscience and and he runs away and he goes off somewhere to contemplate his lonely existence. And we don't know where he was, but we know that Jesus found him because the Bible says that Jesus appeared first unto Peter. And what did Jesus do? He reminded him of his forgiveness. He restored him to ministry. It reminded Peter that just as he had forgiven him, Peter would also have to, in accepting that forgiveness, needed to forgive himself. And that's the other thing that we have to deal with in our lives. We hear about God's forgiveness in Christ all the time, but sometimes it, it's difficult for us to forgive ourselves. And we pray for those that might be struggling with that right now. They've heard the gospel. They know of Christ's forgiveness for them, but they're struggling with it, the ability to forgive themselves through Christ. And if you know who that is, please lift that person or those that you know Lift them up in your prayers every day so that they can receive Christ's forgiveness and in Christ's love and forgiveness can also forgive themselves. And Luther had some things to say about it. And I know that as Lutheran, sometimes this stuff passes in front of us like, oh, I've heard that before, I'm aware of that. But Luther told us to remember our baptisms every day. And that is not some kind of trite pious concept. This is a reality that deals with our forgiveness and our ability to forgive ourselves in Christ. He said that we are to remember our baptisms every day because so often when we wake up in the morning, we can think of a sin of, of our past or, or a sin that, that, that haunts us every day or a mistake that we've made that haunts us every day in our lives. And so Luther says when you get up in the morning and you remember that sin that comes to you every day of your life, you drown it in the waters of baptism. The power of the gospel connected to, to water, the power of Christ's love and forgiveness for us, those sins that we remember are buried, drowned in baptism every day of our lives. And we make the sign of the cross, we give them up to our Lord, and then L Luther says, sing a hymn. And then get out of bed and go about your joy, your day joyfully. 
you're haunted by some sin of the past, something that comes to your memory every single day of your life, start your morning off with the remembrance of baptism. And I promise you it'll make a difference in how you live your life and in your ability to forgive others. Forgiveness and reconciliation is why Christ came to forgive those of us who have fallen to the temptations of the evil one, those of us who have been hurt or abused by someone else, or those of us who simply cannot forgive ourselves. This is why Christ came. And we who follow Christ are always being commanded to do things that we cannot do on our own. We're commanded to love those who are unlovable. We can't do that on our own. We're called to serve without counting the cost. We can't do that on our own. We do that for Christ, through Christ. And we are called upon to forgive others. And I believe that that is the hardest commandment of all, is to forgive others. Because the forgiveness of others and the forgiveness of ourselves requires a sacrifice. It required Christ's sacrifice for us as the perfect Lamb of God without sin to cover my sin. And oftentimes as we hear that, we realize that there's a certain sacrifice also that we make when we, when we realize that we just have to forgive others, even those who have betrayed us or hurt us in such terrible ways so that we are not caught in this, this prison that turns into bitterness. The Bible simply says, and this parable tells us, that we are bidden to do it. Not because it's humanly possible. It is not humanly possible, but because as we try to do what God commands us to do, the ability to do it is given to us by the God of grace and mercy by the very God of grace who showed mercy to you and me, just as he showed mercy to the, un, uh, to, the, to the servant who owed so much. And so we must forgive, not only because of what anger and resentment will do to us, but because forgiveness comes from the heart of God. In fact, Luther says something else to us today, and he says this in the large catechism. He says that when you, when you forgive someone, it is an audible sign of God's forgiveness for you. When you forgive someone else, it is an audible sign of God's forgiveness for you. And that's the freedom of forgiveness. And that is the truth. And the truth will set you free. May it be so for Jesus' sake. Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in your mercy you have forgiven our insurmountable debt of sin, ransoming us with the death of your Son. Free us from our grudges and unforgiving nature, lest through our lack of mercy we exclude ourselves from your forgiveness. 
Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as you kept Joseph from evil and brought good from his suffering in Egypt, deliver us by your grace so that we may learn patience in trials. Teach us to be slow to judge, quick to forgive, and steadfast in love for you and one another. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you, O Lord, for retaining among us your holy word and sacraments. Continue to raise up faithful stewards of your mysteries, that repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name would be proclaimed in our midst and throughout the world. Prepare your baptized children to be faithful confessors of the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy. Caring Father, visit the homes of your people. Keep them from all harm and danger, and grant that we would dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels. Lord, in your mercy. God of power and might, sustain the nations of the earth and lead them in the way of justice and truth. Defend life and liberty, and give us honest and faithful rulers, that our nation may strive toward what is honorable, true, and just. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, according to your will, grant healing to the sick and infirm, especially Janet Wigman, Pastor Bickness, Erica Williams, Alan Werner, Don and Lorene Arthur, Jean Wells. And also be with those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially the Deb Donnelly family at the death of her mother, Patricia, the family of Dee Richard at the death of her father, Ron, and also the McCarty family, the loss of little Maggie. Grant them patience to endure their time of suffering and crown their days with your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, though we come to, to your table as servants who owe a debt we cannot pay, your Son has forgiven it in its entirety. As we receive his very body and blood for our forgiveness, let us be grateful and go out to serve others with the same spirit of forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Now after receiving these gifts of the Lord's Supper, let us return thanks. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that this sacrament that we have now received strengthen us in faith. Faith demonstrated in loving service to one another and marked by forgiveness and care. As we have shared in the hospitality of your table, enable us to live each day as your people who are given to hospitality, charity, and service. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.